Con Murphy on the 11th of May 1921 gave his life for Irish freedom. He was born on the 8th of May 1896 in the townland of Ballinrother near Clashfluke Crossroads between Clannacilty and Timeleague. In the 1901 census, Con was in Ballinrother with his six brothers and two sisters. Growing up, Con had a great interest in Gaelic games and he won medals for handball. He is pictured here as a minter with the Valley Camogie team in 1919. In this Murphy family photograph taken in Ballinrother is Con's mother Margaret, knee Ryan, with the hooded cloak. And back left is Con's brother Bat. In this photograph, also taken at Ballinrother, are Con's brothers with their wives and families. The Murphy brothers from left are Bat, Tim and Sonny. In 1918 there were widespread protests against the proposed introduction by the British of conscription into Ireland. They wanted to force more Irishmen to fight for them in World War I. To counteract these protests, the British introduced a new law banning unlawful assemblies. The Timaleague branch of Sinn Féin on the 28th of July 1918 decided to hold a fesh as a fundraiser but they were warned by the RIC who informed them that the holding of a fesh in Timaleague was banned. However, Sinn Féin decided to hold the fesh instead in Barry Row in defiance of the new law. Over a thousand people gathered for the fesh in Barry Row across the road from the Catholic Church in Peter Cohan's yard and adjacent field. The RIC sent a two-man patrol from Timaleague barracks to see what was going on and they went back to Timaleague for reinforcements. When RIC District Inspector Rowan arrived in Barry Row with military support, the fesh was in full swing. Rowan informed the people that they were at an illegal gathering and that they should all go home. Despite the military presence, the crowd effectively ignored and jeered them. Under order, the military with bayonets fixed fired warning shots into the air and they with the RIC charged at the crowd. There was widespread panic and a lot of the people took refuge in the church. Con Murphy and six other men were arrested. When Con was admitted to Cork Jail, he was described as being 6 foot 1 inches tall, with fair complexion, hazel eyes and weighing 12 and a half stone. A couple of weeks later, the seven defendants were tried in Bandon Courthouse, where a large crowd had gathered and there was a large contingent of armed military present. During the trial, Con refused to recognise the court and he was sentenced to two months hard labour in Crumlin Road Jail in Belfast. Once the War of Independence started, Con became first lieutenant of the Timaleague Company and the following are just some of the battles he was involved in. The attack on Timaleague RIC barracks on the 26th of February 1920. The blowing up of Timaleague Castle, burning of Timaleague House and the RIC station on the night of the 3rd of December 1920. The second attack on Kilbritton RIC barracks on the 15th of January 1921. The fight at Borgesia House near Ross Carberry on the 2nd of February 1921. Crossbarry ambush on the 19th of March 1921. Con was also present a few days later in the early hours of the morning at Tlagoch graveyard for the burial of Charlie Hurley. Just over a week later, he fought at the capture of Roscarbury RIC barracks on the 31st of March. In April 1921, Con Murphy was promoted to captain of the Timaleague Company when Captain James Hardnett was wounded near Tlagoch in a surprise attack by the British. In 1921, British General Sir Edward Peter Strickland was warned that if the execution of IRA prisoners went ahead in Cork on the 28th of April, IRA counteraction would be taken against his forces. On the 28th of April, four IRA men were executed by firing squad. So the IRA planned retaliation attacks against the British in the Southern Division region. In the 3rd Cork Brigade area, every one of the 10 British garrisons between Inishannon and Castletown Bear would be hit on the same day, the 14th of May. The officers of the local companies, including Con Murphy, were called to a brigade meeting at O'Neill's house at Maraborough between Kilbritton and Timaleague on the 10th of May to make preparations for the attack. On the way to Maraborough, Con stopped off at Hayes' house in Castleview where he had his supper. 
His friend and neighbour, James Hayes, who was also a member of the Timaliga IRA, walked down across the fields with Murphy as far as the lower Castleview Kilavardig Road, and Con headed off walking to Maryborough. The meeting went on late into the night, and most of the officers slept afterwards at O'Neill's. Con, along with Michael Coleman and David O'Sullivan, left early in the morning and walked about a half a kilometre to a manis of Clounderine. According to Michael Coleman, they had just arrived at O'Mani's and were talking to Mrs O'Mani, who was at a window upstairs. They had heard that Percival's Essex Regiment column had stayed in Tlagoc the night before and were making inquiries if Mrs O'Mani knew about it. Suddenly a column of Essex soldiers based in Court McSherry under the command of Lieutenant Henry John Walter Silver entered the farmyard from the farmyard of another family of O'Mani's who lived next door. Con and David O'Sullivan made a run for it, with the British firing after them. Michael Coleman slipped into a nearby outhouse where this building is now and hid behind an upended horse butt. After a while he heard the military withdrawing and decided to follow his comrades. About 150 yards from the farmyard he came across the body of Con Murphy. Con had been shot and killed as he vaulted the gate. Coleman had to leave his friend as he could hear Percival's column nearby. The Essex forced the elderly James O'Mahony to tackle a pony onto the same butt that Michael Coleman had hid behind and to take Con Murphy's body to Kinsale as they thought the body was that of his son James. The same detachment of Essex had shot dead an unarmed civilian called John Hodnett at this spot in the townland of Ballycardine and Barry Row on the previous Sunday morning as he was walking to Mass in Court McSherry. Hodnett, who was a 52-year-old farmer, was shot a few hundred yards from his farmhouse, which is still to be seen in the background of this photograph. The military afterwards claimed that Hodnett refused to halt when ordered. He died of shock and hemorrhage, and death was instantaneous. John Hodnett was buried in Lislee Churchyard. The day after Con Murphy's death, his father Dan was told that his son was shot, so he decided to head to Bandon to make inquiries. He either saw Con's body near Bandon being transported in a lorry from Kinsale, or he saw the body in the workhouse in Bandon. He didn't see his son's face as the body was being held under armed guard, but he recognised Con's gaiters and boots and knew it was Con. He made his way back to Tlashfluk in case he would be recognised and his house burned. That day, on the 12th of May, another IRA volunteer, Frank Hurley, was being buried in Kilbrogan Churchyard in Bandon, and the military that were guarding Con Murphy's body in the workhouse had to leave him and join the Ring of Steel which surrounded Kilbrogan Churchyard during Frank Hurley's funeral. While they were away, Mary O'Mahony and Rick Regan managed to recover Con's body and hide it under bags of bran in the back of a horse cart. With Mary and Rick sitting on the cart, they removed Con's body to Tlagoc Graveyard for burial. Incidentally, Mary O'Mahony and Rick Regan were repeating the same journey that they had made to remove Commodore Charlie Hurley's body from Bandon the previous March. Mary O'Mahony was James O'Mahony's daughter, who drove the pony and butt with Con's body to Kinsale. Captain Con Murphy was buried in Tlagoc Churchyard with full military honours in the middle of the night just yards away from the graves of his comrades, Commandant Charlie Hurley and Lieutenant Paddy Crowley. On the 14th of May, local IRA reprisal attacks went ahead in Clonakilty and Court McSherry. In Court Mac, an IRA unit which included Michael Coleman, who had the narrow escape the morning Con Murphy was shot, ambushed two British soldiers of the Essex Regiment. They had just left their quarters in the Coast Guard station. The soldiers were attacked at this spot at the western end of the village, close to where the anchor for the Cardiff Hall is located today. The soldiers were off duty and heading to a local tailor, Richie Neal, to order a suit. One soldier was wounded and escaped. He was seen running onto the strand with blood running down over his pootas. The other soldier, Lance Corporal Roland Medell, was fatally wounded. Medell was 30 years of age, single, and was later buried in St. Peterport on the Channel Island of Guernsey.
Though Medell was part of Lieutenant Silver's Essex detachment, it is not known if he was at O'Mahony's yard when Con Murphy was shot a few days before. Con Murphy's memorial at Clowndoreen was upgraded about 20 years ago, with a new surround wall and plaque being added. This photograph was taken on the occasion of the unveiling of the upgraded monument.